you guys my name is Brittany and welcome back to my YouTube channel you guys in today's video I am going to be doing a brain dump for you guys where I'm going to just take all of the ideas that I have out in my head for my planning for my upcoming homeschool year the 2023-2024 homeschooling year I cannot believe like we're at this point you guys like uh, I don't know if any of you guys are like me but I really only have 11 more weeks left to my homeschooling year and then it's summer break for us um, and yeah it's just so crazy like how fast these years have gone by um, if any of you guys are new here to my channel um, I again I'm Brittany I am a homeschooling mom to three girls ages 11 4 and 3 and in the upcoming homeschool year I will have an 11 5 and a three-year-old so that will be a Officially, sixth grade, kindergarten, and pre-K uh, are going to be like the homeschooling ages that I'm going to be teaching this upcoming homeschool year. I'm excited. I'm a little bit nervous because I'm starting one of my kiddos off from the beginning with kindergarten. And then my oldest daughter, we are going to be officially in middle school. So um, I'm a little bit nervous, but I am excited going into this upcoming homeschool year. I feel like as I have gotten more homeschooling years under my belt, I have become more confident and um, I'm just used to, you know, the the flow of the year and um, it, I'm just feeling more confident and prepared I should just say for the upcoming homeschool year um, so I am just gonna like you guys do a brain dump I have like my clipboard right here of all of the ideas that like I typed out on my computer because um, while I do have somewhat of a plan I still am like narrowing down these choices and hopefully this video will kind of like help you guys uh, see the process of like brainstorming and like what's in someone's head as they are planning for um, the upcoming homeschool year and um, yeah I hope I'm not too chatty if this video is too long I will cut it into two parts but if not um, you kind of will see like my brainstorming process from um, the beginning to the end and kind of see like uh, where I'm at and my thoughts for my upcoming homeschool curriculum choices for all of my kiddos. So I'm going to go ahead you guys and start off with like the easiest uh, kiddos which is my two younger ones. Um, nothing pretty much is going to change with them. I pretty much have like a solid plan with them. It's just one thing that I'm thinking about adding in for them. So for uh, Leia and Alana, Leia will be my kindergartner and Alana is like my preschool pre k ish um, type of like curriculum that I'm going to be looking for for them. But for the most part you guys we will be staying with all about reading. Uh, we're going to be doing math with confidence a mixture of Matthew C with them of course handwriting without tears I love that for them and um, explode the code get ready for the code I'm sticking with like my uh, main core with them uh, if it's not broke don't fix it so <laughs> none of those things are broke uh, those curriculum choices have been you know great fits for us in my homeschool so pretty much with them uh, that's gonna be like all their core so it's not really gonna be much a uh, much of a surprise when I do make my curriculum pick video for uh, my younger two um, the only thing like I'm brainstorming about for them is I'm trying to think if I am going to add in some type of science for them uh, to do like fun studies for them to do to add on to their core but I'm not quite sure so in the state of Georgia I technically don't have to register uh, my middle daughter Leia into like the Georgia Board of Education until she turns six so kindergarten is not necessarily a required home a required um educational year uh, for us in the state of Georgia. Um, even if she was to go into public school, technically I wouldn't have to enroll her until the first grade. So all of my state laws that I have to follow for my oldest daughter, Brielle, I necessarily don't have to follow for Leia because she's not going to be officially uh, registered in the state of Georgia. So I kind of have like one year to like get my feet wet before I am required to teach um, all of the core subjects, which in our state is reading, writing or is reading language arts um math social studies and science are the five core subjects that we are required to teach every single year in our homeschool so um i'm not necessarily going to worry about like history we will do like some type of geography study where you know i do want her to know you know her continent her um what some simple map work uh oceans you know just like the regular basic type of geography but those are things that i know i can do with uh, my younger two without a curriculum i really don't need that for those types of things but for uh, kindergarten science 
clients, I do want to do something, but I'm not too sure if I want to like uh, keep it simple or if I want to add in something. But here are some of like my ideas that I have for uh, them. My first idea is actually to try out uh, gentle and classical um, nature. I have done gentle and classical uh, preschool with them this homeschooling year, and it was really, really fun. And I know they have their uh, gentle, and um, gentle and classical nature volumes. They have a volume one and a volume two um, that I was kind of like looking into, but I really don't know, you know, like, am I going to be consistent with this program? I do have exploring nature with children um, already. We do did a few units with all of my kiddos uh, this time last year we did butterflies and I forgot something else we did I think we did insects or something else we did this time last year with them but I wasn't really consistent with the exploring nature with children and I was just thinking well maybe I might be consistent with the gentle and classical volume since I'm kind of like already used to the format of those curriculums um, I don't know another option that I had was to keep it really really simple you guys and just get like the Evan Moore skill sharpener science book for kindergarten and like match it along like the topics along with some books from the library uh like just some simple readers like this we are going to do a weather unit you guys um this is our next unit after we finished off or after we're finished in space i'm going to do a weather unit for all of my kiddos so this is one of the books that i have selected but i'm just using this as an example um of some of the like reading books that i would like pair along with the ever more skill sharpeners i would go to my library and whatever topic it's covered in that ever more skill sharpeners I would just beef it up by checking out books from my library uh, that goes along with the topics and keep it really really simple um something else that I was thinking about you guys for them as far as science my younger two is just to do some type of subscription box so I don't even have to think about it like I have tried out uh, knowledge crates you guys this is actually our fall crate that we did this year it was so much fun this is actually the school age crate so this one is like Brielle's age but I know knowledge crates has like um uh, like primary pre-k kindergarten age group that I could do with my younger two kiddos um, I was looking into like kiwi co boxes or a uh, science boxes as well for them so I don't have to think about it I won't have to follow a curriculum we'll just get a box in the mail every month we can do the science experiments we can check out books from our library um, and do things like that so those are like my options that I'm looking for as far as adding in science for my younger ones and those are like some of my ideas that I'm thinking about doing or like I said before you guys I would just stick to the uh, the basics with them reading writing arithmetic and call it a day um, so I really don't know what direction I am going in but those are like some of my ideas for them now you guys <laughs> For my oldest daughter, uh, Brielle, this is the one where I really feel like um, I'm thinking really, really hard for her. Um, I do have some criteria that I put down as far as what I'm looking for in my curriculum picks for her for this upcoming year. I have uh, several options <laughs> and um, I really don't know what direction I'm going to go in. I think I have it narrowed down, but um, I'm still kind of like going back and forth. So we're just going to go ahead and uh, brainstorm brainstorm for her she will be again again going into the sixth grade so my criteria for her curriculum that I have right here is that I want to find something that I'm going to be consistent with for the next three years I'm really not looking to like try out new things I really want whatever curriculum picks that I pick for her that I'm going to be consistent in her middle school year um, another criteria that I have is that I want her uh, curriculum to be uh, self-paced and independent like those are really really important um, I don't mind me coming in as like facilitator facilitator and helping her out with her studies but I don't want any like teacher led uh, curriculum is what I'm saying I want curriculum where uh, she can feel confident in uh, starting it off on her own and then I come in uh, you know in the back end if that makes any sense um literature base I feel like literature base is okay but I don't know if I want to like it to be like really really literature heavy for her Brielle loves reading and um, I know a literature based program uh, probably wouldn't be uh, bad for her but I'm really not too sure um, as far as like other things I do want to focus on these next three years um, I do want to focus on uh, financial literacy for her I want to do something in like social and emotional health health for her uh, we want to I want to like target critical thinking 
thinking skills. Um, I want her to work on a passion project uh, these these uh, middle school years. So whatever she may be passionate in, I do want to have like the time outside of her formal curriculum for her to work on like some type of passion project. Right now she's been working on writing. Those have been like her passions that she has had. But if um, she has any other passions, I do want to like open up like the um, homeschool to in invite like any other like passion projects that she may uh, want to continue to do in our homeschool. Um, some other things I want to do is I want to focus on life skills with Brielle um, outside of the curriculum. Um, I want her to continue to learn how to cook. Um, she specifically told me she wants to learn how to cook like more dinners and things like that. Uh, Brielle technically has mastered like breakfast and lunch but she definitely wants to get in, in the kitchen like more with me doing like nitty gritty uh, dinners and things like that so I definitely want to incorporate her uh, doing some more like basic cooking um, some other things that's important to us this homeschooling year is that um, I really want to focus on uh, her taking better care of like her her overall self um, and like her hair and things like that. Um, if you are a mom and you definitely know as you know, an African American, it's different for, you know, your kiddos to take in the rings to learn how to, you know, take proper care of their hair, especially for a curly girl. So um, Brielle definitely expressed an, a desire for her to learn how to, you know, do her own hair. So I definitely know that that's going to be something we're going to be working on, like in our overall home. So, um, those are just like some of my goals and uh, criteria and things that I do want to focus on these next three years for her. Now, um, I de definitely want to preface this, and I think I said it in my last video, is that I'm really not too sure if I'm going to homeschool Brielle uh, in high school. Um, I definitely know that these next three years, I do want to focus um, on staying pretty close uh, to my um, state standards just because um, I do want to leave the option open for if I do decide to put her in to like public school, I don't want her to feel behind or to feel uh, like she is inadequate or she's missing things um, in our homeschool. So um, it's really important for me to kind of like stay close to it so I can keep that option open if that's something we want to do. So um, while for my younger kiddos, um, I feel like I will be more loosey goosey kind of like going with the flow for their education. Uh, for Brielle, I feel like we're going to kind of be uh, more rigid I should say and more rigorous uh, but at the same time it's still going to be overall relaxed in our homeschool. So uh, one of my uh, options that I had for curriculum for Brielle actually is Bookshark. I was looking into uh, Bookshark specifically uh, their world history series. Um, Bookshark has a really cool like eastern hemisphere uh, level and they also have uh, their world history for Bookshark uh, in two volumes so volume one and volume two. Um, Bookshark is uh, similar to Sunlight where they are like literature heavy curriculums um, where we will be doing read alouds together but then Brielle will be having like her independent readers that she's going to be reading. Uh, she will have like math work and things like that and um, I really feel like Bookshark will be like a good overall uh, core for her uh, but I'm not too sure you guys. So that is like one of my options as far as like curriculum to stick with her for the next three years. Um, another curriculum that I have and this you guys is like one of my dream curriculums for her in particular. I have researched this curriculum you guys really since January and I have been looking into it and that actually is um, Oak Meadow. I have been looking into Oak Meadow because I love how uh, the curriculum is set up for the kiddos. Um, it is independent and student led where I will come in as like you know that facilitator uh, part of uh, Brielle. She has the option for each of the subjects for um, the English language arts history and science. Um, she gets to pick and choose which assignment she wants to do for each week week in Oak Meadow. Um, it really uh, keeps it really puts in place like the kids, uh, what they want to do, and it really gives them that sense of accountability and ownership in their education um, where they do have a choice uh, between different options. Um, Oak Meadow is a heavy writing uh, curriculum, and I definitely know as Brielle is a strong writer, she definitely will love a curriculum that, you know, has a little bit of literature uh, 
correlating with it but it also has like the art and the writing and the science so um that is a curriculum i have been looking into um and it really really interests me i'm gonna go ahead you guys and put some videos down below because i think um a few youtubers have been uh, like making videos on oak meadow and i will go ahead and highlight their videos down below if you want to like know more about them i'm still kind of like getting my feet wet and learning more about oak meadow but that definitely is a choice and an option that i'm considering in my homeschool um because i can te definitely like stick with the series for sixth seventh and eighth grade and um I think that that would be a perfect curriculum uh, for Brielle. We do have our literature, but it's not too literature heavy. And um, she gets the opportunity, you know, to have like that, uh, I guess, autonomy to be able to pick and choose the assignment she wants to do each week. And um, yeah, I'm really, really excited about that option. Another option, you guys, that I have is to really just go online with Brielle. Like, um, I think she's definitely ready uh, for me to like uh, transfer like our uh, overall flow into like some some type of online uh, flow for her where um, she will be doing at least like her history, uh, portions of her literature and science online. Some of the online platforms that I have looked into has been um, Power Homeschool. I've looked into Time for Learning and also Monarch Academy. So those are like three online uh, databases for homeschoolers that I have been looking into. All of these online programs are very affordable. I think the Time for Learning and the Power Homeschool is only $24 a month and then Monarch is $39 a month. So really, really affordable because at the end of the year, what's that like three or $400, which is about the price that I typically spend for curriculum for the whole year for um, each, for at least her since she's oldest my younger ones they're a lot you know cheaper at this point but you know as they get up there you know their curriculum does get more expensive but um that is around the price range that i do spend for her curriculum so um I definitely will still be on budget for her. And then for the rest of her subjects that we have been doing, I think I'll probably would keep it the same if we did do um, the online portion. I would uh, pretty much stick with um, Matthew C for her. So for the next three years, we would do, uh, for sixth grade, we would do Matthew C Zeta, pre-algebra for seventh grade and algebra one for eighth grade will be like her flow um, if we did online for her. As far as grammar, I think I still will, even if we did online, I think I still would go ahead and add in like either um, the Fix It Grammar series, we would probably finish it off because right now Brielle has finished books one and two. We're working on book three. So that leaves the last three books for us to be able to work in on middle school. So that'll be book Fix It Grammar book four, five, and six. We can complete off the series um, in middle school. As far as writing um, goes, if we were to do online, I think I would still continue to use the writing portions that um, I have been using for her. I think we would continue with IEW structure and style. I think we would do it for two more years so we would do the IEW structure and style 1b year one and then we would do for her seventh grade year we would do IEW um year a year uh two or IEW 1b year two is what we would do and then for her eighth grade year I was looking into doing lost tools of writing because that focuses on argumentative and persuasive essays so uh that will be like what I would choose for writing for her as far as like literature, I think I would just um, have her continue to read books she likes to read and whatever um, literature time periods we are in, I'll probably pick out some selections from our library uh, for her to read if we were to uh, do online. So online would definitely be like a mix of some of the curriculum that we already are using and then I would use the online for subjects that I feel like I'm definitely lacking in like the science especially and the history uh, for her to have something consistent where she can go on that would definitely um, be an option for uh, Brielle. And uh, I guess my last pick would be like maybe just to continue to do like what I'm doing now uh, and just pick out or for her to continue to do some of the same curriculum she is doing now and just pick out some science and history uh, for her. But um, I think those are the ones that I talked about, Bookshark, Oak Meadow, and some form of like online and mixture of the curriculum we are using would be like my top three choices uh, for Brielle for this upcoming uh, planning homeschooling year. Um, so you guys like 
these are like some of my ideas. Um, I really don't know which ones I'm going to go with, but um, if you guys like are brainstorming for your homeschooling years, uh, the best thing I would definitely say is first off, write out like your criteria, the things that you're looking for in your homeschooling curriculum, and then kind of like narrow it down by subject the way that I have. Um, but um, like I said, these are like some of my ideas and what I'm thinking of uh, doing for all of my kiddos. I do have somewhat of a plan, but I'm not... <laughs> <laughs> all the way narrowed down. So um, I hope this video wasn't too chatty and um, I hope you guys were able to kind of like get in my head and see like my thought process of um, me planning out my curriculum for my upcoming homeschool year. Um, if you're in the thick of this, you guys, um, just know it's gonna be okay. <laughs> we're gonna get through this planning process and um, yeah, just continue to like uh, focus on you, your homeschool, your goals and the things that you wanna obtain in your homeschool and just let the rest kind of like fall through so you guys thank you so much for watching thank you so much for uh, just chit chatting with me in today's video and as always I look forward to seeing everybody in my next one bye